with Cricket in Phoenix, and we're going to check out her picture-perfect edible garden. But first, let's hear about your blog. You have incorporated your artistry into your blog. Tell us about it. Well, my blog is Garden Variety Life, and actually in March I had a garden tour, and so many people said, you need to blog, and I didn't know what to do. And so I just started taking pictures of the plants that I have and the things that I make, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy it. Were you a photographer to start with? No, but I'm a graphic designer. Okay. So I kind of have that eye. That's great. That's great. You reached out to other gardens and oh, right. created a, a garden tour, a virtual garden tour. A virtual garden mm -hmm. tour. Tell, tell us about it. Well, when I first moved here from Seattle, I didn't know how to garden at all, and so I was online all the time looking at people's gardens. Yeah, we all so do that. <laughs> I thought, I see all these beautiful gardens that people have, but um, I see them on Facebook and then they're gone. So right. I thought, why not have something on my blog that people can go back to over and over, and then also see how they do certain things, and they can answer questions nice. in the comment section. So nice. I really enjoy doing it. And you actually, they described or showed you pictures of their gardens and you created some sort of a graphic design? Or? Yeah, I try to um, ask them to give me a drawing of their yard and then I can turn it into a watercolor. From an overhead view? Yeah, from an overhead view, kind of like a landscape drawing. Well, what's the response been? It's been really good. I think people are really inspired, which is the goal. Right. I think people like showing off their gardens, so I like <laughs> that too. You said you just started gardening? Well, I started 10 years ago here. Okay, here. Did you garden in Seattle before you moved here? I tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, the climate's so different, right? It's so different, and my property was so small. And I had a giant maple tree, and it didn't really let anything grow there. So okay, yeah. I tried. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean. You're interested, so how would you describe your success? My success? I guess slow going. I started with the Permaculture Guild and just learned from that. Mm -hmm. Now I've also heard that you're into upcycling. Oh yeah. What have you upcycled that you've done in your garden? Well, several things, but my favorite thing is our urbanite garden bed that I recycled from my neighbor's patio. So is it concrete? Yeah. What, it, what concrete. is urbanite? Is that a term or is that a real well, thing? Well, it's a term. It's Urbanite is basically broken up concrete that would normally go in the landfill. Oh, okay. You just piece by piece broke? Well, they were putting the concrete into the dump truck and I drove by and asked them if they'd dump it in my driveway instead of the landfill. But it looks like the pieces are sort of uniform. Did someone cut those? They are not uniform. Oh, it's a puzzle. Okay. It's a puzzle piece putting it okay. all together. Oh, okay. And it's fun and hard. And it became a retaining wall for your uh, veggie garden yep. or your flower garden? Mm -hmm. So you have a family. Yes. And you have a child? Two. Two children and a dog. Yes. <laughs> and a husband. Yes. And how has your garden effort changed your family's life? Well, I think everybody just loves it. They love being in the garden. They love the chickens. Um, I think they really like bragging about our garden to their friends. <laughs> and of course, we get to eat from it. That's right. And you have bees. Yeah. Not everybody has bees. Yeah. So has that been a positive experience, keeping bees? We've had some hard times and we've had some really good experiences, but it's still new. So. Right. It, it takes a while to, to get the hang of it. Yeah. I mean, you just don't start beekeeping and, and have perfect success yeah. right out of it. So you have to have a little patience, right? Same for chickens, I would think. They're easier. <laughs> They're just cute and you can play with them. <laughs> right. What's her name? Moosh. Moosh? My son named her. Oh, okay. Hey, Moosh. Hey, Moosh. Mooshy. Hi. Hi. Have you laid any eggs today? Probably. She's beautiful. Yeah, she's a cochin. So she's very fluffy. A cochin? Uh huh. Her legs were fluffy all the way to her feet. Looks oh, like let's she see those feet. There's her feet. Oh my goodness. I know. Looks like she walks around with gauchos. <laughs> you started out with how many? 
Well, we started with five and one died oh. and in the summer. And so we've got these ones and I really love them for taking care of the compost. I just put oh. it right in their, in their poop and they eat it up and make eggs. <laughs> and they're so sweet. They're I'm not loosh. hard at all. Hi, Moosh. Uh. Soft, huh? Silky soft. I, I really don't know. What is a wicking bed? What does that mean? Okay, well, wicking beds are used for water savings. If you think of wicking like a candle wick, it wicks the wax up the wick. Mm -hmm. So what you're do a wicking bed is a self-contained, self-watering garden bed. So oh. it's completely enclosed, and it's basically like a little pond underneath the soil and the plants wick the water up instead of putting the water on top. Well, how do you keep the dirt away from the water? There's a gravel bed. Okay. And then on top of that is, uh, I used shade cloth. You can use any porous cloth. Okay. And then you put the soil on top of that and then, then you water from the bottom up. And so the gravel just sort of sits in water. Yeah, the gravel just is kind of holding, holding the water, holding the soil up. So it's the cloth that's transmitting the water to the roots. Exactly. Ah, so you've got to have the right kind of cloth, obviously. Well, anything that's porous, really. You could put okay. burlap, you can put landscape fabric. Okay. You don't miss a trick, right? <laughs> Tell right. me about your water harvesting. Well, we got these rain barrels, um, actually for $3 at a, off of Craigslist, and they were awesome. blue, so I painted them. Drilled a hole in it and put a spigot and a hole up here. And but how many do you have? I have three. I could fill them in five minutes in one of our rainstorms. Do you just dip and go? I use these mostly for watering my pots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And and about your other watering, we've seen some people here that have flood irrigation. You don't have that in your no. neighborhood. So do you have drip irrigation? Yep. Around? Drip irrigation everywhere. Except for your wicking beds, which is even better. I mean, you yeah. just fill up the tube and how long does it last before you well, need to water it? Well, all winter, I probably will need to water it three times. That's amazing. Yeah. So she has four wicking beds that look like they're about 10 by four, four mm -hmm. 10 by four. And what do you consider winter in Phoenix? <laughs> That's the question. I guess December through February. Oh, just three months? Yeah. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> And then it starts getting hot like in May, right? Yeah. Or April. Yeah. yeah. And then you water, you just add another watering. So that really does cut down on the water. It does. Because there's no evaporation and the water is right where the roots need it. Because when you water on top of the plants, even with drip irrigation, it's got to go from the surface all the way exactly. to the roots. So if you're going to have raised beds, it's a great idea to have wicking beds. Yeah, it is. My husband built these trellises so that in the summer the house would be shaded because it's very hot and it has made such a difference. Wow. Yeah. How do you get such lush plants? I mean, are you, you're doing wood chips? Yeah, I do a lot of wood chips. I think that makes a huge difference. And of course, a lot of compost. Are you making your own compost? Yes. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> you decided to just do it all, right? Yeah. How many fruit trees do you have? Probably 30. Wow. I love your pomegranates. Those are amazing. Thank you. Are they, they sweet? Yes. Oh. They're wonderful. In fact, that's the variety. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, okay. Let's let's go have one. Yeah. Do you have a wonderful that's ready to eat? Well, I never know till I open it. Oh. Really? Yeah. That's how you that's how you I don't know. I never well, it's kind of the big dilemma right now. We've been talking about it on Facebook. So oh. everyone's wondering, how do you know when they're ready? Because you open it and it could be white or it's red. They're still good when they're white, but oh, oh, it's kind wow. of a perennial question. What is this? Sky flower. Isn't that it beautiful? It's so pretty. And it just kind of weaves through everything. Yep. Yep. Oh, I love that. You need a knife to cut it, right? Probably. Somebody told me this great technique for getting the seeds out. Yeah. I think you just cut it in half and then you put it in a like a plastic container with a lid and you just shake it vigorously for like five minutes. Are you kidding? And then all the seeds come out. I'm gonna do that. Like that. Mm-hmm. 
And they're white Oops. inside. Yeah, this is white inside. It's still good. And then you find the ridges making a mess. Wow! That's so great! Okay, so this is Jack Davis's technique for opening a pomegranate. Pomegranate. You said this is how they do it in the Middle East? Mm-hmm. So they, they open them up like this? They quarter it, kind of. They quarter it. Mmm, it is so sweet. It's really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is yours good? Delicious. Mmm. 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 Oh, that is so juicy. Tart, but sweet and crisp. So this is the first time I've seen Roselle on this trip to see Jack. Why are you drying your Roselle upside down? Well, two reasons. I needed the space from my garden and this was a good place to hang it. Okay. And also I'm trying to save the seeds and I want to use the calyxes for tea. All right, well it's very artistic too. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of another one of your artistic touches. This is an impermanent one. Yes. And we're gonna check out some more of your permanent artistic touches. Like, I love your archway. Yes, that's it's like your archway into archway, your, yes. your wicking bed garden. This place is so perfect and complex mm -hmm. and artistic, <laughs> which requires all of your talents. How much time do you spend a week on this garden? That's a good question. <laughs> it depends. In the summer, it's too hot, really. And the rest of the year, I spend out here most of the time. Most of the time yeah. you're out here. But it might, part of it's just enjoying it, really. Right. It looks perfect to me. Are you done? Never done. <laughs> you want like 20 more trees? <laughs> oh yeah. It, next year it'll look different. Yeah? Yeah. It's like rearranging your furniture like once every five I years. I mean, last year at this time <laughs> we didn't have chickens, so. That's true. You know, it's always evolving. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty of a garden. Yes. And the bigger beauty is that you're sharing it with your family and your friends and Absolutely. neighbors. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is an awesome lady. Be sure you uh, check out her blog, which is Garden Variety Life. That's right. All over. Yeah, they love it. Just now they can see the wind and the aphids. Show me. Lacewing eggs? Yeah, really. There's a lot. Let me see. Oh, that's what they look like. A little threat hanging the egg. Mm hmm. Or group of eggs. My husband yeah. loves these peppers. Uh, this is a paquin. This is a close relative. The chiltons are round like a ball, and these are longer. P E Q I N. I know that I'm inspired, and I hope you're inspired by all the amazing things you're doing in your garden. Best of all, your artistry, which elevates gardening to a whole new level. So, thank you for sharing all of that with us. You're welcome. <laughs>